This is Anish Giri, and this is by his standards a very stupid blunder. This is a game he played against the rising superstar Gukesh, a young player from India, and it was played in the AIM Chess Rapid, a new online event, part of the Champions Chess Tour, which has just kicked off. So let's have a look at the game that led up to this blunder played by Anish Giri. And please excuse my voice, I've had a cold the last couple of days, so I'm just getting over that one. Right, we had c4 on the board from Anish. e6 in response, knight c3, d5. We go down a queen's gambit line. We had a queen's gambit declined here. Black doesn't take the gambit. And now we had takes on d5. Pawn recaptures. This is known as the Carlsbad pawn structure. Carlsbad spelt with a C in case you want to look that one up. And now we had bishops g5. The standard move, you bring the bishop out before playing pawn to e3. And now black very often goes bishop e7 there, that's the main move. c6 also seen a lot, but bishop b4 is a very interesting, a bit more aggressive way to play here. Now you immediately pressure this knight of course, and you're not losing a piece by the way. If you check, then looking to pick up the bishop, well black's going to play like this. So instead we had this pawn just developing to e3, and now this is black's idea to break the pin against the queen. Let me turn the engine off here. We had uh, h6 kicking the bishop, and then g5. That's how black breaks the pin. And when you kick back this bishop here, well now you can also land knight e4, immediately pr uh, pressuring this knight. So black gets a big initiative in this opening, but you are leaving behind a lot of weaknesses, of course, when you're pushing forward these pawns. So queen c2 played, adds protection to this square. And now black carries on this aggressive initiative, pawn to h5, looking to trap that bishop now with this and then f6 if it comes to e5. So we had f3 giving some room, also kicks that knight. So the bishop was captured, Gukesh picks up the bishop pair, grandmasters love playing with those bishop pairs. Now bishop to e6 developed, and that was an important move to do first. The knight wants to come to d7, but Gukesh doesn't want to block in his bishop, so he develops that one first. Now we had castles queenside from Anish. Knight to d7, a3 put a question to this bishop, Gukesh dropped it back, he wants to keep his bishop pair, and now we had e4 from Anish. So striking in the centre, good move, this is really white's compensation for the bishop pair, the bigger centre here, nice, fluid, mobile, and you don't want to be capturing here, or then the pawn recaptures, and suddenly the knight can develop really easily into the game, it couldn't do so before, plus you've seeded the whole centre here to the white player. So instead knight b6 was played, now we had e5 kicking on, the bishop drops back, and now f4 from Anish, good move, preparing to develop his knight, Queen d7, prepares to castle the king uh, queen side here, also lines up this nice battery to come here. So bishop d3 comes, stops this bishop from activating. Now bishop g4 was played, pressures this rook, the knight developed, and now there's some pressure here on this pawn. I mean, you can't take it immediately with the knight because of the pin, but long term there's going to be issues there. So Gukesh just chops off. He also opens the g-file potentially in the future as well. Castle's queen side now played, pawn to f5, and so these are Giri's big trumps in the position. These are looking very menacing here as we can see. So king b8 played, just coming off this potentially dangerous diagonal. White does the same down this diagonal, always play king b1 as Ben Feingold would say. And now c5 from Gukesh, great move, striking at the centre, and Anish now goes pawn to f6. By the way, here, there was an interesting pawn sack, or temporary pawn sack, of pawn to e6. Just a very instructive clearance sacrifice, because then you free up e5 for the knight to hop in, you hit the queen, wherever it goes, you can then pick up this bishop here. This is the general idea, and you get some good play down these light squares with the bishop, etc. Anyway, not easy to find those quite deep ideas in rapid chess. So f6 was played instead. The bishop dropped back and we had takes on c5. So although the bishop can now bounce back out, generally speaking, you don't want to start opening the board for your opponent's bishops if you can avoid it. Queen b3 is Anish's idea, pressuring this pawn. And when he opened the d-file here by capturing on c5, or I should say it another way around, when he captured on c5, he opened the d-file for his rook. So this is really his big play now, playing against this isolated pawn. But... 
h4 generates counterplay. This is what Gukesh is now going for. So the bishop comes to e4 here. Excellent move from Anish, pressuring this pawn some more, using the pin. You know, you can't take, you lose your queen. But what are you doing after h3? Because that's now starting to undermine this pawn that protects the knight, etc. And this is where Giri blunders really badly. Like said, I can just imagine him calling this a very stupid blunder in his own analysis of this game. So you can't actually take this pawn like this if we just show that one first. Because then the bishop captures on f3, bishop recaptures, and the problem is this queen to f5 check. Sometimes you see this king come all the way to a1, by the way, in these kind of structures, and this is a good example of why. So king goes, you lose the bishop. So that's why you can't capture the pawn. Now, Giri takes this pawn here, but what he should do is take here with the rook. You just can't afford to let that pawn capture on g2. Now, although this gives an exchange, this is why he won't have played it. After the queen recaptures, this is the top line. Well, you can take the pawn on d5, and uh, white does have good compensation here, uh, a pawn up for the exchange. Plus, we can see this light squared bishop is a very powerful piece. So, good compensation there, but not necessarily easy to play. Black's better in that position. But Giri didn't go for either of those ones, so he took on d5 here with the knight, but big blunder now because captures on g2 was played. Now he'll have seen this, but he didn't see the sting at the end of the tail. So the rook is attacked. You have to do something with that rook. If you come to g1, well then you can be picking this one up with the bishop. If you come here, well then again, there's problems with actually queening the pawn. And you're not just picking up an exchange in these lines, but the problem is that after this sequence of moves, rook recaptures, now takes here. I know this is a long line, but what I want to show is that the piece on d5 is then loose at the end of the line. So this is why it's a really big problem. It's not just the exchange on g1, it's that loose knight on d5. So that's why we didn't have any of this line being played, trying to move the rook along the back rank. Instead, Giri takes that rook, this one recaptured, and now he takes on b6. And this was his idea that now there's no loose knight to worry about, this one can hop back, etc. But he'd missed this next move, clearly. Queen takes on d1, check. Brilliant move by Gukesh. So you temporarily sack the queen, but then the rook slams down on h1. You're instantly winning it back. So if you take here, this is no good. Then black makes a queen still. And if instead you go king to c2, by the way, after rook a1, uh, a1, sorry, h1, we had a resignation. But if king c2, for example, well then again we can take, and you can recapture with the king, you can also throw in a check. Really, whatever you do, it's no good, because the problem is you're chopping the knight, say bishop recaptures, and then again you're making a queen, you just can't stop that one going through. So crushing win by Gukesh, but very bad mistake by Giri. Coming back here, you know, he still had about seven minutes on the clock here, so I'm surprised he missed this move. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see another exceptional game between Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann, check out the video on screen. Do hit subscribe to never miss a future one. And thanks very much for watching. See you soon.